मनुष्य मनस उत्सन्नता अ लिविंग बीइंग हु कैन रेस डेवलप्ड कल्टीवेट द माइंड अप टू द मैक्सिमम लेवल दैट लिविंग बीइंग इज कॉल्ड मनुष्य according to the teachings of the buddha there are 31 groups of living beings in this universe so human beings uh, belong to one of these group we are called manushya and other living beings also given name according to their way of life human mind is such that can be developed either to destroy the whole world or to guide the whole humanity to lead a respectable noble harmless life ma now you can understand the nature of the human mind scientists have developed human intelligence without depending on god or religion by using their independent intelligence they have discovered many things finally they have misused what they have discovered for the destructive purpose today human mind can destroy the whole world within half an hour there is no another living beings in this universe who can do that that is why <coughs> albert einstein one of the best very highly intellectual scientist he says science without religion is blind that mean they do not know what they are doing nobody to guide them correct them divert their mind to go through in correct way path according to their discovery they produce nuclear weapons to destroy the whole world that is human mind a god or devil or ghost or any other living beings cannot do that only human mind on the other hand the buddha by cultivating developing purifying his mind he gained enlightenment many people actually do not know what is enlightenment very loosely they use this word enlightenment so one day when the buddha was going somewhere he met a brahmin i think you know the meaning of brahmin the hindu priest teacher master guru for everything they are called brah brahman he has never seen another human being like this person so he could not believe that this is a human being he came and asked may i know whether you are a god the buddha says no i am not a god others try to claim they are god or messenger of god or son of god the buddha says no i am not a god then he asked in that case may i know whether you are any other form of supernatural living being he said no i am very natural <laughs> then he asked in that case are you an ordinary human being no now confusing in his mind who is person is 
then yeah, then who are you? Uh, the Buddha gave the answer. This answer is very important for us to know, to understand who the Buddha is. If somebody come and ask you, now you follow the Buddha, can you tell me accurately who the Buddha is? But I don't think you can give correct answer. You say something. This self-introduction given by the Buddha is very meaningful. We can understand why he is called enlightened one. He said in his own language, <coughs> Abhinyayang abhinyatam. I understood everything that which exists in this universe. Bhaveta bhancha bhavita. I have practiced all the great qualities, virtues, morals, principles, and good qualities in this world. Pahatabhang pahinang me. I have eradicated, uprooted all the wicked, cruel, harmful, immoral thought, words and action. Tasma Buddha Brahmana. Therefore, I am not a god, not an angel, not an ordinary man. I am the Buddha. Ah, this is the meaning of the Buddha or enlightenment. Buddha is not his name. Buddhi in Sanskrit Pali languages means wisdom. Buddhi. Buddha means person who got that supreme enlightenment. That person is called the Buddha. So, you can understand how difficult it is for a person to develop his mind to know everything that which exists in this universe. He has not done this within one lifetime. Life after life, by practicing parami or perfection, he went on cultivating, developing, knowing, understanding all the existing things. That is why the Buddhas are very rare. Now, 2500 years ago, Sakyamuni, the Buddha appeared. But we do not know how many thousands or how many millions of years we had to wait to see another Buddha. That is the most difficult task in this world, becoming a Buddha. Cultivate all the great qualities, virtues, principles, morals, and eradicate all the evil, wicked, cruel, harmful, immoral things. Take for instance how difficult it is. Now all of us have jealousy. Jealousy is very minor weakness. We know we never gain anything because of our jealousy. We create very bad atmosphere, we create enemies for nothing. Even then, can we completely eradicate the jealousy from our mind within one lifetime? There's no one who can do that. Here, Bodhisattva, before becoming a Buddha, he is called Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva means, Bodhi means wisdom, Sattva means person. Person who was working to gain supreme wisdom is called Bodhisattva. So as a Bodhisattva, 
Life after life, he went on developing, developing, cultivating, eradicating, eradicating evil things. Then purified the mind. It is impossible for us to find out another human being who has purified his or her mind. can behave as cultured, understanding, kind, honest person. But the evil thought, the roots of the evil thoughts are in the mind. Circumstances, environment, temptation, irritation, flare-up. One of those evil thoughts which are dominating in our mind. Therefore, it is not so easy to purify our mind. But he said his mind is completely purified. The purity of the mind and the supreme wisdom, knowledge, understanding, realization he had combined together. Then the brightness is there. In his first sermon, Dhamma Chakka Sutta, the Buddha says, Aloko Udapadi, brightness arose in his mind that he never had before. In our mind, there is no brightness. Because mind is in the dark. There are so many dark clouds around our mind. Greed, selfishness, anger, jealousy, grudge, ill will, all these are dark clouds moving around our mind. Therefore, mind is in the dark. That is why we cannot understand, we cannot see things properly. We create our own imagination, wrong concept, wrong belief, wrong ideas, because we cannot see the reality in life or anything that which exists. So the Buddha has done this. Then after gaining enlightenment, he advised. There were sixty arahantas. Arahanta means those who have completely purified their mind. They are perfect saints. They are not enlightened. They are perfect saints. He said, Charata bhikkave charikang bahujana hitai bahujana sukhai lokanukampai atthaya hitai sukhaya deva manusam. This is the first missionary religion in this world. Buddhism is the first missionary religion. After training these sixty arahantas, the Buddha said, Charata bhikkhave charika. Now go forth, go out. Two persons should not go together, individually, one by one, to spread all over the country. Bahujana hitaya. For the well-being of others, it is your duty to guide, to correct, show them the correct path, how to lead a respectable, harmless life. Bahujana hitaya. Bahujana sukhaya. For the happiness of others. Many people are worrying and crying and lamenting and whole day and night, not knowing what to do. But you must go out. 
and try to make them to understand the nature of their problems and troubles and difficulties that they are facing. Bahujana Sukhaya. Bahujana Hitaya must have sympathy, kindness, compassion toward them and guide them to lead a respectable life. Uh, this is uh, the mission that the Buddha wanted to introduce. He did not want to introduce a religion. He did not want to introduce Buddhism. He wanted to introduce how to lead a respectable, harmless, noble life. Uh, that is the main purpose of his message. Later, we have developed his message as a religion. If you analyze this word religion, actually Buddhism is not a religion. We lower the status of the message of the Buddha if we say Buddhism is a religion. What is the meaning of this word religion? It is a Latin word, religio. Religio means binding. So when they created this word religion, they interpreted binding to God. Uh, that is religion. If religion means binding to God, we cannot say Buddhism is a religion. Why? Addressing those 60 arahantas, Buddha says, Muttohang sabb pasehi ye dibba ye chamanusa. Now, all of us are liberated, released from divine and human bondages, fetters. Yeah? <laughs> Binding, but Buddha says you want to release, not to bind them. That is the Buddha's message. But we are doing so many things in the name of the Buddha, in the name of religion, uh, according to our way of life, our culture, our traditions, our way of life. But this is, uh, today we accept as a religion. Anyway, just now I mentioned the nature of the human mind. If it is not guided properly, that human beings can misuse that intelligence for the destructive purpose. Because they have more jealousy, more greed, more selfishness, more anger in their mind when compared with other living beings. Others have very lesser degree of these forces. But human beings have these uh, evil forces which create, persuade, encourage, force them to create endless problems, troubles, disturbances, violence, bloodshed, war. When the United Nations wanted to draft the Constitution, they have written, they have repeated what the Buddha has said. They do not know that. It is written, war begins in the human mind. 
voice not created by devil or ghost or god or anybody, but the human being. Animals never create war. Take for instance, few dogs start barking, attacking, biting each other today. After that they separate. Tomorrow when they meet, they are good friends. <laughs> if animal had such battle, forever they keep this enmity. Small children, when they play, they fight and attack and scratch and cry, then come and complain to mother or father. Uh, then they go and do something to console them. Slowly they separate. Next day when they meet, again they get together and play. They cannot remember that they had a fight yesterday. Uh, here you can see the nature of our mind. We keep this in our mind throughout our life. Then the whole family members also join with them. Uh, this is the nature of the human being. So, main purpose of the Buddha's message, now you can understand. He started with right understanding, not with faith or belief. There is nothing to believe in Buddhism. I have returned that book, What Buddhists Believe. One day a Christian priest came with a group of people to have a dialogue, very friendly dialogue. Then he asked this question, can you tell me actually what Buddhists believe? I told him very frankly, Buddhists do not believe anything. <laughs> he got a shock. Then he saw my book in the cupboard. He said, why did you write that book? What would this believe? <laughs> that is why I wrote this book. You better read. You can understand whether there is anything for you to believe. We use the word belief when we cannot understand. I believe you are so and so. If I know you are so and so, I know you, the word, I believe you are so and so. When we are uncertain, when we can understand, we use the word belief. Now, as Buddhists, we never say we believe in the Buddha. There is nothing for us to believe. Why? We know the Buddha. If we know the Buddha, there is nothing for us to believe. Understand. Uh, that is why he did not start his mission with belief. We believe something today, after some time it changes, knowing that it is wrong. Throughout our life we are going on changing our belief. <laughs> but understanding, Try to understand first. Then, without understanding, whatever you do, very easily you can create mistake or disturbances. Through understanding, you try to cultivate the good qualities and to reduce the bad habits or human weaknesses. Here, yeah, what is the meaning of Samadhiti in Eight Noble Path? He started his mission with Samadhiti, right understanding. That is the beginning of Buddhism. That is why there is no belief. What is this understanding? Understanding of Four Noble Truths. What are those four noble truths? 
why they are called noble truths. Truth is truth. Where is noble truth? But the truth revealed by the Buddha is a noble truth. Why? It will never change. Person who tried to follow by knowing this method also become noble people. Now that's why it is called noble truth. Four noble truths. What are those four? Dukkha, Samudaya, Nirodha, Marga. Four noble truth. Dukkha. Unsatisfactoriness in our life. How many times a day we experience unsatisfactoriness? Whatever we have, more than enough things we have, but always we experience unsatisfactoriness. Ah, this is the nature of our life. Dukkha. Samudaya. What is the cause? of this unsatisfactory. We can blame others, we can accuse others, we can complain, but others are not responsible for the cause of our unsatisfactory. Our craving, our greed, our selfishness, uh, that is the cause of our unsatisfactory. If the contentment is there, one of the best advice given by the Buddha for us to maintain contentment. What is contentment? This is enough for me. This is enough for our family. And then you maintain contentment. After that, you do not develop jealousy because you have. You have no jealousy when others enjoy their life. You are contented. When there, there is no jealousy, anger also cannot appear in that mind. If there is no anger, violence and bloodshed also never appear there. But started with that contentment. So simple, but we can avoid endless, enormous problems if we can maintain contentment. But our greed is so high, although we can possess the whole world as our property, we still can satisfy. This is the nature of the human mind. No contentment. So, unsatisfactoriness always appear in our mind due to our greed or selfishness or anxieties. Dukkha Samudra. Then Nirodha. What sort of freedom that we gain by reducing this unsatisfactory? If there is satisfaction in our mind, there's no trouble, no complaint, no worries, no disturbances, because satisfaction is there. Why there is no satisfaction? We have trained the mind not to develop craving, our greed and so many other things. Then. Release. Mind is relaxing. Ah, that we call nirvana. Nirvana means complete freedom from unsatisfactoriness, physical and mental uh, pain and sufferings and 
unsatisfactoriness that we are facing. Nirvana is not a place, not a planet, not a different world. We achieve, we gain. We cannot go to Nirvana, that word is wrong. I want to go to Nirvana. <laughs> no one can go to Nirvana. You can bring Nirvana. When you reduce all these evil forces from your mind, you bring Nirvana into your mind. That means you are completely free. All these worries and problems and troubles and suffering that you are facing today. Then the last one is Mag. Mag means way or path. What should we do to gain this freedom, liberation, salvation? Uh, that is the most important aspect. The Buddha did not encourage anybody to come and worship him. He never asked anybody to come and worship him. He was not in favor of erecting Buddha images. For nearly 500 years in India, they have never discovered any Buddha image. They started to erect images during Greek occupation. When Afghanistan, those people destroyed the Buddha images, even Muslims, Christians also come and ask, why you people are keeping quiet? <laughs> I told that is the uniqueness in Buddhism. Just because those people have broken some stone there, why should we fight here and create violence and bloodshed? That is Buddhism. Again I told them, if people followed the Buddha, there is no image for them to destroy today. <laughs> Without any image, we can practice the teachings of the Buddha. Not only image. When the Buddha was alive, one of his disciples called Vakkali, every day he come and sit down in front of the Buddha and watching, just like watching television. <laughs> Buddha asked, Vakkali, what are you doing here? Then he told, you know, when I look at your physical body, your complexions and features and the serenity and oh, everything gives a lot of happiness. That is why I like to come and watch. <laughs> then the Buddha said, now you can understand who the Buddha is in his own word. Kingte vakkali imina putikayen dugandheyen sarire. Vakkali, by watching this dirty, filthy, impermanent physical body, what do you gain? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you entertain your emotion. That's all. You cannot see the Buddha by watching the physical body. There is no different the Buddha's body or your body or my body. Body is body. That is why Buddha says this dirty, filthy, impermanent physical body. What do you gain? Nothing. Yo dhammang pasati, so mang pasati. Then the Buddha said, if anyone, if anybody want to see the real Buddha, Try to understand the dharma taught by the Buddha. Through this dharma, through his teaching, you can create the real Buddha in your mind. All the others are artificial. Real Buddha you can see. If you come to know oh, what the Buddha has said, correct. Ah, you create a real Buddha in your mind. 
So, physical body, the Buddha had many sicknesses, suffer. But this body does not know this is the Buddha. So he had to suffer from various things. That is the nature of the physical body. According to Mahayana schools of Buddhism, they introduced three bodies of the Buddha, three kaya. Kaya means body. Sambhoga kaya, Nirmana kaya, Dharma kaya. Three bodies he had. Although he had three bodies, he was not a busybody. <laughs> Sambhoga kaya, the body that he used to preach, to talk, to guide, lead others, he used Sambhoga kaya. To eat, to sleep, to take bath, to go to toilet, he used Nirmana Kaya. Dharma Kaya, doctrinal body. After his passing away, Sambhoga Kaya disappeared, Nirmana Kaya disappeared, Dharma Kaya exists. That means Buddha did not die. The Buddha cannot die. That physical body and the activities that physical body maintain, everything died, activities, by using the physical body, but not the dharma, not with this enlightenment. This dharma kaya exists forever. This is for people to understand, Buddha is not dead. Others come and criticize. Buddha is not a god. He is a man. He is dead and gone. Why do you want to worship? Why do you want to pray? What do you gain by worshipping this dead man? They, that's why they try to convert others into their religion by using this word. But you don't know what to say. When they come and criticize like this, you do not know what to say. Here, you can say, Buddha did not die, remember this. Dharma kaya, Dharma bodhi. In his teaching it is mentioned, whether the Buddhas appear or not, Dharma exists forever in this world. Uh, that Dharma body of the Buddha never die. After gaining enlightenment, immediately after he recited this word, Paturaho se magade su pubbe dhammo asuddho samale chintito. This Dharma that I understood through my enlightenment is not a new Dharma, new doctrine. This dharma existed long ago in this country, but people have forgotten, misled, misinterpreted, completely polluted. That is why the Buddhas will appear from time to time to reveal the hidden, a spoiled, polluted dharma, to show, bring them into the correct path. That is the duty. Different Buddhas have no different doctrine, teaching. Same teaching, same message by every Buddha. Now the path he has introduced for us to stop all our physical and mental sufferings and worries and fears and disturbances. Eight noble paths. Eight method. Simply by worshipping, praying to Buddha, or by erecting huge Buddha images and temples and pagodas, and performing rites and rituals and ceremonies in the name of Buddhism, we do not get the chance to find out our salvation. 
these are the activities that people have introduced from time to time to influence others, to bring others. But if we remain forever by performing all those activities, we never gain our salvation. Please remember this. We had to get into this correct path, otherwise no end. What are those eight items? Sammaditti, Samma Sankappa, Samma Vacha, Samma Kammanta, Samma Ajiva, Samma Vayama, Samma Sati, Samma Samadhi. Eight. We have to follow this eight method. First, right understanding. Instead of believing, creating imagination, your own conception, try to understand. Within your capacity, must try to understand. That is the beginning of Buddhism. After this understanding, Sammasankap, try to understand what is in your mind. We know everything in this world what is happening all over the world. But we do not know what is happening in our mind. <laughs> uh, this is our need. So his advice is, you must try to know, try to understand what is in your mind. Uh, then if you think unbiasedly, then you can understand, I have jealousy, I have anger, I have greed, I have enmity, or I have kindness, I have compassion, I have sympathy, I have honesty. Uh, then we analyze. Then we come to know, according to our way of life, the way how we talk, the way how we live, the way how we work, we can understand how we use these things. <coughs> Good things, and bad thing are uh, understood. We should not try to justify, oh, nothing wrong with us. <laughs> Always blame others. <laughs> Our egoism, that egoistic idea, becomes the main cause of so many troubles and problems in this world. When there is a problem, violence, we always blame others, blame others. But when we investigate unbiasedly, I am also responsible for that. <laughs> I also contributed something for this problem and violence and bloodshed. Uh, that is how unbiasedly when we try to understand the nature of our mind, we have to admit. There is a well-known saying written by a Mahayana Buddhist scholar, Dharma Kirti. He says, when we have problems, instead of worrying, we must try to find out what is the cause of this problem. By worrying, you never get the chance to get rid of your worry. You develop your worries. Ah, uh, then you will come to know oh, this is the cause of this. The book that I have written, Why Worry? Do you know how many people have stopped committing suicide after reading this book? They came to see me, they have written to me. Two years ago when I went to Australia, one lady is a wife of a doctor. She, having seen my name in the newspaper, she came and told me, you saved my life. I said, how? Oh, I didn't. I have never seen you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Somebody gave you a book for me to read. I have decided to commit suicide, given up everything. 
But I read this book twice. After reading, I came to know that I am also responsible for some of these problems. <laughs> Why should I commit suicide? Some people in Malaysia, Germany, England, America, one couple in America, separated. One of them had the chance to read this book. They were not Buddhist. After reading, with the, I don't know, with the husband or wife, after reading, that person came to know that they, ha they have separated due to misunderstanding. <laughs> then send the book to the other person, husband or wife to read. And after reading, that person also understood. Then again they get together <laughs> and return me a letter. Because of your book, now we are living together as husband and wife. <laughs> a prisoner in South Africa, two weeks ago, I received a letter. After reading this book, why would he? He become a Buddhist. Do you know what nationality, what religion he had earlier? He said, I have become Buddhist after reading this book. Now I want to introduce this among my friends in the prison. So I sent few copies. Second letter I issued, there's a big demand. And people do not worry, do not complain, do not bother, do not, what you call, uh, do show their sour face. <laughs> they can understand the nature of problems. So, amount of letters I get from England, I got a letter from the husband. My wife had a very moody and very hot-tempered lady, <laughs> always argue and fight and quarrel with others, relatives and friends and neighbors. When I was thinking what to do, I had the opportunity to read your book, Why Worry? After reading, I handed over. Then she also read. After reading, now it seemed completely changed her attitude. Now she is very understanding and very peaceful wife. This is from England. From Germany, I got a letter. Your book, Why Worry, I use as my Bible. <laughs> Always I keep this under my pillow. When I go to bed, I read at least two or three pages. Because I know how to console my mind after reading this book. Now uh, here, we create our own imagination because of our greed or jealousy or anger or uh, discriminations we are not ready to admit that these are wrong attitude we suffer because of our own evil thought and blame others you can understand this when you change your way of life through your understanding. Now here, eight noble path, the Buddha advice, first one, try to understand. Then try to find out the nature of your own mind. Then, Samma Vaja, how to talk, art of talk. We talk, but we do not know what we talk. <laughs> Create unnecessary misunderstanding, enmity, argument, because we have not learned how to talk. We had to learn. Talked mindfully. Mindful means 
we must know what we are talking. The Buddha's advice is, if you want to talk, talk something meaningful. If you haven't got anything meaningful to talk, better to observe silence. This is the advice given by the Lord. In Zen Buddhism, it is mentioned, those who do not know, talk a lot. <laughs> those who know, keep quiet. <laughs> it is true. It, due to lack of understanding, we are talking. Therefore, art of talking, talk with mindfully. What we are talking, to whom are we talking, whether it is necessary to talk. Even in Mangala Sutta, the Buddha says, Kalena Dhamma Sakacha. You have to discuss the Dharma, but Kalen at proper time. If you go on talking always, talking about eight noble paths, four noble truth, and Nirvana and Buddha, people think you are something wrong with your mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is why Buddha say you can talk the Dharma when the time is suitable. By disregarding that they are wrong. We do anything, whatever we can. See what is happening in this world today. Whole world is a battlefield. The whole world is a madhouse. Human beings do not behave like humans. Animals in the jungle live peacefully. <laughs> because they follow the nature. Human beings have violated the nature because of that intelligence. So other living beings have no such intelligence to violate the nature. They have no religion. Among those 31 group of living beings, religions we can find only among the human beings. Others have no religion. Even Devas, Brahmas also have no proper religion. Animals, spirit, ghosts, devils, we have good religion. <laughs> only human beings. Why only human beings need a religion? Reason Last year we had the interreligious, uh, what do you call, discussion in Kuching. Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, Muslims and Sikh, five speakers. Then somebody asked one question. Who created religion? <laughs> Whether created by the man or given by the God? Christian, Muslims, Hindu, Sikh, all these four speakers wanted to escape, answering this question. They asked me to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> then I knew they want to escape. <laughs> if one of them said created by the man, then lot of argument. If another group say no, given by the God, then so many arguments. That is why they wanted to have it. Then I thought, why not? I also escape. <laughs> <laughs> I said, if I am going to answer this question, it is like this. Which come first, with the egg or chicken? <laughs> Uh, if you answer this question, then I can answer it. <laughs> so 
So, we must understand <coughs> what we talk and what we do. Think mindfully to avoid evil, wicked, cruel, harmful things, to cultivate good things. Talk something meaningful which are important. By thinking, by talking, by doing something, we create good karma and bad karma. Mind itself creates good karma as well as bad karma without doing anything. By talking, we create a lot of bad karma and a lot of good karma. And by doing certain things for our pleasure, for our living, we do many bad karma and good karma also. We never think. Now, hatred, ill will, and a strong misconception that we maintain in our mind. There is no such thing as uh, moral or immoral. We must have freedom to do anything, whatever we like. Uh, that is called mitta, the wrong concept. We don't believe that there will be another life after that. This is the only one. Without studying, without thinking, without observing, simply say, we don't believe that there will be another life. Uh, this kind of concept, if we maintain, uh, these thoughts create bad karma. By talking, to hurt others' feelings, scolding, accusing, blaming, criticizing, condemning others, we pollute our own mind, our purity in the mind. Hurt others' feelings, create bad karma. We talk to others to console when they have fear, worries, disturbances. We go and talk to them to console, to reduce those who are suffering from sicknesses. We can go and console them, talk to them nicely to reduce their fear and worries. By doing that, we create good karma, to console others. By doing certain things, you can understand very easily. We can slaughter thousands of others, living beings, for our living, for our pleasure. We can do any dirty, vulgar, immoral things for our pleasure. Read newspaper every day what is happening in this world. Animals never behave like this. In one of the discourses, Buddha has said, dogs are better than human beings. Do you know that? Yes. Male dog never disturb female puppies. <laughs> but this two-legged two -legged dog, <laughs> own father, few months old girl, baby, molest. That is why Buddha say, dogs are better than human beings. This is the nature of the human mind. We cannot imagine how cruel this human mind, up to what extent they can develop this cruelty. Those who have planned to destroy World Trade Center in America, nearly 4,000 innocent human beings had to face untimely death. One and a half trillions property completely burned and destroyed. 
After that, those who organized said, well done. Can you imagine nature of the human mind? Four thousand innocent human beings did. Well done. God blessed it. <laughs> now, there's a big problem. Heaven is fully packed. <laughs> yes. No. All those who destroy the followers of other religions are in heaven. Fully packed. <laughs> that is religion. Now, this is the nature of the human mind. Now, that is why we must know what is in our mind, the nature of our own mind. Then, action. Samma Ajiv. Right livelihood. Action. Samma Ajiv. Right livelihood. For our living, for our survival, we do certain trade, certain business to make money. Yes. There are five things Buddha has mentioned. Goes against the right livelihood. What are those five things? Now you rear animals by selling to gain an income, whether chickens or pigs or cows or any kind of living being you rear to make money. It is not right livelihood. Again, you want to do the business by selling meat. You go and order the slaughter chickens or pigs and sell, make money not the right livelihood. You want to make money by selling poisons that people use to destroy others' life. You can make money by selling dangerous weapons, even time bomb or suicide bombs. It is not the right livelihood. You can make money by practicing slavery. Practicing slavery means by selling living beings or human beings. It was a very big business at that time. They catch innocent human beings, bring them into the market and sell. Are still going on. They catch children, innocent girls, carry them here and there, make money, slavery. Uh, these are the five things Buddha has pointed out. It is against the right livelihood. If you want to go to the correct path, you must try to avoid, keep away from these five things. Samma Ajira. Samma Vayam, right effort. Not by using your body, your mind. You had to strengthen your mind when evil thought appear in your mind, train your mind not to do that. When the good thought appear in your mind, develop your mind to do that. Religion is important for this purpose. When you observe the five precepts, you recite one word. See, Panatipata Veramani Sikha Padam. Sikha Padam Samadhyam. What is the meaning of this word? Sikha Padam. To train the mind. Tranquility in the mind. That means 
when the mind is pure, any objects that we take into the mind, we analyze unbiasedly. Try to understand thing as it is, not as it appears. We always look at things as they appear, not as they are. Uh, through this, we come to know the reality in any existing thing. That is why the Buddha says, Yang kinchi samude dhammam sabbam tam nirod dhammam Dhamma chakkasutta the first sermon. If you can concentrate on this, you can avoid so many problems and worries and disturbances that you maintain. What is the meaning of this? If there is anything that which come into existence, yankincha samyade dhamma, component thing, what are the component things? Element, energies, mental energies, all combined together. Are then the life or the things, or the planet or the sun and the moon, things come into existence. Due to combinations of these elements, energies. But sabbantam nirodhadam. All those things that come into existence never remain forever without changing, without decaying, without disintegrating, dissolving. That is the universal law, not created by any God or any Buddha or Bodhisattva. Universal law. All these things now exist in this universe. You think they remain forever like this? No. Changing, changing, decaying, decaying, and disintegrating. The component thing join all together element and energies. They, the binding factors, energy, start to loosen. After some time, then slowly, 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 then elements and elements and energies and energies cannot agree. Then confusion, then trouble, ah, changing, decaying, dissolve, disappear. Ah, if we can understand this, yankinchi samudaya dhammam sabvantam nirod dhamma dhamma chakusu, the whole universe that which appear. They appear due to the combinations of elements and energies. And of course scientists have discovered uh, so many things, uh, new kind of energy. Electron, neutron, proton and nuclear they have produced by using these energies. Beside this, the Buddha has mentioned only four elements. Nama and Rupa joined together. What is Nama? What is Nama? Apanama. <laughs> Not that Nama. What is the meaning of Nama? My dear friend, you are meditating, you are learning, you do not know the meaning of this word Nama. Nama means mind. Nama, Rupa, join together. Then the life come into existence. Rupa, what is Rupa? Anything that which is subjected to decay, root. 
through the influence of external energies. Rupa. <coughs> now this is Rupa. Combinations of elements, energies, but subjected to decay and dissolve, disintegrate, due to external forces and internal elements and energies, heat, wind, water and internal elements. Slowly, slowly, slowly decay. Ah, therefore, it is called rupa. Nama, namang, naman, lakhanam. There is nothing here in this world, the Buddha says, that you can compare with the human mind. Nahang bhikkave anyang eka dhammam pisabhunpasami yathaidang bhikkave chittam. Chittam is mine. He said, I have never seen any other kind of energy in this universe that which runs so rapidly. Namang uh, Namanilakana. Change. So this Nama and Rupa, mind and matter, that means elements and energies. Combined together, the whole universe exists. Uh, that concentration, that understanding, appear in the mind, completed the journey. Uh, that is the mission introduced by the Buddha. That is the <coughs> religious values in Buddhism. And this is the way <coughs> how to practice Buddhism. So, as long as greed, hatred, ignorance, these three evil roots appear, exist in our mind, we cannot live without fear, without worry. Greed create fear and worry. Hatred create fear and worry. Ignorance create fear and worry. A deva came and asked this question. Anto jata bhai jata jata jati tobata. Here we have enormous problem, internal, external problems. We do not know how to overcome these problems. Are the advice from the Buddha? The Buddha gave the answer. He said, Sile patitthaya naro sapanyo chittang panyanche bhave. If anybody wants to get rid of their troubles and problems and worries and disturbances, there are three things to do. First thing, sile patitta. Try to uphold your principles, your precepts, your morals. By violating these things, Whatever you gain, whatever you do, you never become what you call, will be free from these problems. You must have some sort of principles. That is the first thing. Sile patitthai narodha panyam. Chittang panyancha bhave. Chitta. Ah, then, you must know the nature of your mind. You must know how to train and tame and culture your mind. By keeping all the evil forces in our mind, we pretend, oh, nothing wrong with us. 
then how can we find peace, happiness, how to avoid worries and fear? Panya. Panya means wisdom. Wisdom means clear understanding. Uh, only these three things. First, you must try to uphold your principles, your morals, your ethics. Without doing that, you cannot get rid of this problem. Then you try to train and tame your mind, knowing evil forces and your duties that you have to do. Last one, when you go through this, you gain real understanding, wisdom. After that, no trouble, internal, low, external, everything is settled. But without doing anything else, we want to gain peace and happiness and everything from heaven. <laughs> Just now I mentioned, I think I did not explain the United Nations uh, Constitution. Did I explain? War begins in the human mind. At the same time, peace also must come from the human mind. That I told you, they are repeating what the Buddha has said. People pray and pray and worship and worship, asking peace from heaven, from God. We are fighting and quarreling and killing, we go and pray and pray and come back and again kill. <laughs> and ask the peace from heaven. <laughs> uh, that is the way how they practice religion. Mano pubbang gama dhamma. Have you heard this saying of the Buddha? In which book? In very popular Buddhist book. Mano, first line. Mano, mano means mind. Mano, pubbang, gama, dhamma. Double A. Mind is responsible for all the good and bad thing that which exists in this world. Human mind is responsible for all these good and bad things that exist in this world. Not because of God or devils or good spirit, but human mind. Uh, there they have written there. War begins in the human mind. Therefore peace also must come from the human mind. Unless they create strong determination to stop their fighting, how can we accept peace from heaven? They are asking peace from heaven, asking from God. We are not against God. A few weeks ago, I was invited to attend the birthday of Archbishop. Catholic Archbishop. All the religious groups were there. After speaking few words, all of them say, God bless you. <laughs> After speaking few words, I say, may the Buddhist God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so one day, I met Bishop Pinay. Sometimes I joke with them, you know. <laughs> I say, God bless you. Then they say, where have you got God? <laughs> I say, you do not know, we have Buddhist God. <laughs> uh, that is the Buddhist attitude towards God. Don't say, we don't believe in God. Our concept on God is different. You must never say, you don't believe in God. One day we were invited to attend the International Islamic Conference in Kuala Lumpur. As soon as we entered into the building, 
a group of people from another country. I think they had never seen a Buddhist monk in their life. <laughs> Straight away, come and ask, do you believe in God? I said, why not? <laughs> to ridicule his question. That is not the way to ask, where are you coming from? Uh, what is your religion? We are very glad to see you that you are here. And by the way, may I know what is your concept on God? Uh, that is the cultured man's way of talking. <laughs> so straight away, come in and do you believe God? I said, why not? <laughs> you must know how to deal with all these people. <laughs> what is the time now? Huh? It started at 8.30, isn't it? Uh, why not we give time for them to ask uh, questions? Hmm. Thank you, Chief Reverend, for a very uh, enjoyable and, I'm sure, beneficial talk. I now open to the floor for questions. For the benefit of those uh, sitting at the back, can you please uh, uh, relay your question through the mic. There are three mics provided on the floor. As time is limited, uh, we have roughly about 20 minutes left. Can I have the first question now? I see somebody going to the mic. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, venerable, actually, I have, um, I think, questions which I, I always encounter with the non-Buddhist. You see, even though they claim that they are religious, but they believe in superstition, um, like being charmed, and that, I mean, um, that kind of stuff. So, how do we explain to them? Do you know, every day, I am facing this problem. <laughs> <laughs> How many people approach, sometimes very old ladies, sometimes 80 years old ladies also, come back to, I think someone has charm for me. <laughs> I say, ask for what purpose? <laughs> this belief, I have seen, very, very deeply rooted in this part of the world, Malaysia. Because there are three groups, Malays, Indians, and Chinese. Malays learn from Chinese, Chinese learn from Malays, <laughs> Malays learn from Indian. <laughs> so many superstitious believe. So, it is a very difficult for us to take out this from mind. And sometimes people come with sour face and crying and worrying. Reverend, I have one big problem. Then I say, you are very fortunate. You have only one problem. <laughs> <laughs> we have so many problems. <laughs> then, then we start to laugh. <laughs> then I can go talking, talking. So when he goes out with smiling face, he goes out. <laughs> You must know how to talk according to their knowledge, education, understanding capacity. To some people, whatever we talk, no effect. Then what do you do? All right, don't worry. We give something. You better keep this with you. This will protect you. Nothing will happen to you. Ah, very happy. <laughs> uh, that is the technique, you know. Simply by talking, we can <laughs> now, if immune system in our body, any amount of medicine what we take, no effect. Exactly like that. Thank you. Can we have the second question? I'm sure everyone here, a lot of worries and fear. I have a lot. 
after listening to the talk. <laughs> Good evening, Reverend. Uh, I, I have one question. I can see the person who. <laughs> Where? <laughs> oh, no light, no wonder. Oh, I must see the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, now okay. Right. Uh, uh, If our relative is mentally ill, because of worries, how do we help them to overcome the problem? Thank you. Why only your relatives? What about others? <laughs> <laughs> Many people are facing these kind of problems, but we had to deal with them, handle them, according to their understanding capacity, how far they can understand things, whether they can understand what we are going to talk, or if they have no such pos possibility, no point of talking or advising, then try to adjust another technique. There are various ways. So, I told you, worries and fear and suspicions are natural. But some people increase by taking very seriously. One incident, some people take so seriously into their mind and worry and get angry. And all the others never take seriously, just neglect. They have no worries, no fear. So it depends how we take things into our mind. That's what we have to develop our understanding. So, we cannot console. The Buddha could not control some of his own disciples who were staying with him. Devadatta, very cruel, very wicked, very jealous disciple related to the Buddha. Throughout his life, all the advices given by the Buddha, he did not accept. No one can change the mind by force. No one can change the mind of another person. Impossible. The Buddha also cannot change. The Buddha could not change the mind of Devadatta. He could not change the mind of Channa, another disciple, very stubborn when the Buddha was about to pass away, Ananda came and asked the Buddha, Channa become a very arrogant and very stubborn disciple of the Buddha. Ananda came and asked, now please tell me, what are we going to do with this man when you are gone? <laughs> <laughs> the Buddha said, you must give him capital punishment. Do you know what is capital punishment according to the Buddha? No one should go and talk and invite him for anything. Because way of life at that time is not like today, 2,500 years ago. They had to depend on each other for their survival, for their food, for, for everything. Now everybody is completely neglected this morning. After a few weeks, he, he realized uh, it is due to his mistake that they treat me like this. Then understanding appeared. See the technique given by the Buddha. Now, uh, therefore, whatever advice that we give, we cannot change others' mind. One person cannot change another person's mind, but can give ideas or method or technique to think and understand and change. Now, after listening this talk,
today. Some people say, actually I have to listen, that reverend who gave a talk created anger in my mind. <laughs> Some others say, oh, he created a lot of happiness in my mind. You are wrong. I cannot create that. After listening to me, you created that in your mind. Your anger or happiness, you created in your mind. I cannot create in your mind. Therefore, if people are not ready to listen, by talking we cannot do anything, but there may be so many other techniques and methods. Thank you. Any more questions? We still have 10 minutes more. Final call. It's a rare opportunity we can bring the chief down to Sabah. Oh yeah. That's one, two. Okay. Venerable sir, I was uh, working as a nurse um, some time ago and I was uh, working in intensive care unit. What I would like to ask is when the person was, uh, the patient was on a ventilator and when the patient is uh, very ill and uh, going to pass away when the vital signs is dropping and so on, even though he is on uh, medication support and uh, ventilator support, when the doctor finds that uh, or decides that the patient is not going to make it, when he orders uh, to reduce the medication, that means uh, the uh, medication for the heart support, by me doing that, um, say reducing the medication and all that, do I contribute uh, some kind of a bad karma or anything? Can you please comment on that? Thank you. It is a good question. <clears throat> Many people ask. Now, some people uh, maintain the life by putting tube beer, deep beer, deep beer, deep beer. <laughs> so when you remove these things, that person can survive, die instantly. Whether it is by doing that, do they create any bad karma? Knowing that he died when he, they remove this thing. Another thing, that recently they practice in Australia, euthanasia. The patient go and request the doctor to take away his life. Be requested. They have done. But after that they realize this is very dangerous. Human mind is such they can misuse. Anything in this world they can misuse. Therefore they have withdrawn this one. Karma we create not by action. Action alone cannot create karma. Ketanahang bhikkhave kammang vadami. Our chetana. Chetana means intention. We must do things intentionally. Either Kindness, compassion, sympathy, or cruelty, wicked, and what you call dangerous, harmful thing. If these things are working in the mind to do this, uh, then it will become either good karma or bad karma. You may do a lot of things that which create karma. But they are neither good karma nor bad karma, neutral. Because you did not create that idea in your mind that you want to do that. But action, when you're driving your motor car, how many kills, cats and dogs and some others you may kill. But you never create any bad karma because you never think that you want to kill them while, <laughs> while driving. 
Therefore, we are completely free. But here, person who is going to die, by force, we hold on this by putting all sorts of tube. When everybody comes to know that this person cannot survive, then they request, why not we remove the thing and to get, have the end of it. They do not create any idea in their mind that they want to kill this person. But they know this person's life depart from here when they do that. So that action cannot create bad karma. That means departure of life. Many people uh, still have not realized what is death actually. This body is not our life. This is the house. Our life live in this house. But in some other world system, life can exist without a shelter, without a body. But in this part of the universe, life cannot exist without a sh shelter or body. So when the house is getting decaying and decaying and decaying and rotten and rotten and collapsed, the life goes away. That is called death. No one can kill a life. Life never dies, please remember. Life never dies. There is nothing to die in the life, it is an energy. No one can see a life. No one can see a mind. But they exist. So, if the rotten house is collapsed, what is the use of staying there? <laughs> Go away and build another new one. Uh, that is called rebirth. Buddha says very clearly this. Vinyanam matukujhismin okkaman. The departed consciousness with avidya, trishna, karma, upadana, bhava, with these five mental ingredients in the mind. That is life. Other religionists use another word, soul. Because they could not understand the real meaning of consciousness. We can explain what is consciousness, what are the ingredients, what are the energies in the consciousness. But this English word cannot give real meaning of the word used by the Buddha Vinyan. In Pali, Sanskrit language, there are 42 words to explain the nature of the mind. In English language, consciousness, unconscious, semi-conscious, <laughs> that's all. Therefore, we cannot get the real meaning of the word used by the Buddha, Vinyana. That Vinyana depart from here. Life is there. Therefore, life never dies. So why do we worry when it is rotten? Better to kick it out and go and build another new house. <laughs> By force we are holding it, keeping for nothing, to suffer more. Many people can understand. Whole day and night suffering, suffering physically and mentally. Still they want to live. For what purpose? <laughs> I really can understand. When your passport is expired, my dear friend, <laughs> you had to renew the passport. <laughs> One more final question before we close the session. Oh, you always final. Eh? <laughs> Renew, renew. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Venerable, I want to ask a question on diet, that is a vegetarian diet. How important is it for our behavior? Because I was told if you eat meat, you'll be fierce as a tiger. If you eat grass, you'll be tame like a buffalo. So how important is diet for our behavior and our, what you call, understanding? And how important is also a vegetarian diet for our prayer life or meditation life? And lastly, how important is this vegetarian diet for our life, long life, do, are we healthier? Do we live longer with a vegetarian diet? <laughs> so many things in your question. <laughs> <laughs> do you know Devadatta, who tried to kill the Buddha, <laughs> was a vegetarian? <laughs> Hitler in Germany who killed nearly three million Jews, was a vegetarian. <laughs> the Buddha and Jesus, both of them have made one statement. I mentioned this in one of my publications. Purity and impurity in our mind never take place just because the things go through the mouth into our body. But the thing come out from our mouth create all these things. <laughs> ah, this is the Buddhist attitude. But today people have realized vegetarians maintain healthy life. I know very well for four years I spent in northern India with Hindus, they are pure vegetarian for thousands of years. And all these modern sicknesses that people are facing today, they have never heard. They are free because they lead normal life, they eat normal food, they follow according to nature, they are free. So, it is true. If we keep away from uh, flesh, Take natural food, you can have a pure mind also, no guilty feeling in your mind. But by taking what we eat, from the religious point of view, we cannot say the person is pure religious or not. With the vegetarian or not, if the mind is pure or dirty or ugly, it is up to individual. No, the Buddha has never given this advice to the monks, should not eat meat or fish. Devadatta came and asked the Buddha, why not to introduce the monks to lead a vegetarian life, eat only vegetable food. The Buddha says it is unfair. Because their way of life at that time, not like today. They had to go out with their arms bowl from house to house. Whatever people have prepared in their houses, they come and offer. They cannot choose, oh, we cannot eat this, we cannot eat that. They must have that freedom to eat what they receive. But they never order. I want chicken, I want pork, I want beef. <laughs> there are three principles. Ah, this is very reasonable. If a monk comes to know that this chicken is slaughtered for him, Buddha said, better not to take that. If you suspect this person has killed this chicken for him, he should not take it. If you have listened from another person, I know that person killed this chicken for you, should not take them. Ah, that is purity of the mind. Ah, here you can understand how liberal this Buddhist way of life. Otherwise, when I went to Mongolia to attend a conference, you know, certain period, no vegetable at all. They eat only meat and bread. 
So there are many delegates who have come from certain countries, pure vegetarian. What did they offer as food? One big piece of meat like a bricks <laughs> and with a knife and bread. No vegetable. All those vegetarians had to suffer. Now we can understand why Buddha did not introduce such law that you should not eat. Supposing those who live only eating fish, what do you call them? No, not fishermen. <laughs> only fish. The name I forgot. What do you call them? There's nothing else, only fish they eat. They survive only by eating fish. What do you call them? Eskimo. Eskimo. Ah. If Eskimo become vegetarian, <laughs> can they practice Buddhism? <laughs> ah, that is why Buddha did not introduce that kind of But it is up to individual. If you think it is nice and this and you, okay, go ahead, no problem. But don't force others not to eat. <laughs> Your final one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief Reverend. We have come to the end of today's session. Tomorrow, there will be an informal question and answer session on Buddha Dharma again with Chief Reverend to be held in the KK Tseying Temple from 8 to 9.30 p.m., it's also free and open to all. Those of you who still have questions to ask on tonight's lecture, or maybe in the dreams tonight, may do so at tomorrow's Q&A session. So once again, on behalf of everyone here, thank you very much, Chief Reverend, for sharing with us this very beneficial lecture. I'm sure all of us now know that we cannot live without fear and worries. But we have all learned how to lessen our fears and worries after hearing Chief Reverend's lecture. So on behalf of the organizing committee, thank you to you all for being present here tonight and for your audience, for your attendance and for being a wonderful audience. Chapter 2, Prayer, Power of the Mind, will be here on Wednesday night, 14th of August, the same time in this hall, where Chief will share with us how to develop this mental power. There will be a few announcements after Chief Reverend's departure, Sabhasangha Buddha nu bhave na vinasa mentu, Dhamma nu bhave na vinasa mentu, Sangha nu bhave na vinasa mentu, Dukkha patta chani dukkha, Bhaya patta chani bhaya, Soka patta chani soka, Hontu sabbe pipanino, Sabbe buddha bala patta, Pachye kanan chayang balang, Arahanta nanjate jena rakhang bandha mi sabbha so Sad, sad, sad Good health and peace of life to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And one bow.